Hi, it's Kate with Tested. Today I'm going to share with you some of my favorite tools for paper craft. Now, the biggest part of that is going to be my favorite cutting tools. I've got a few different blades here. I've got some tweezers, some scissors, and some glues, and we're gonna go over some of my very favorite things to do with them. <laughs> now, if you have seen uh, my past favorite things videos, you might re recognize this fingertip craft blade here. This is by Fiskars. Actually, a lot of my tools are by Fiskars. I just really like them. I promise it's not a paid promotional anything. They're just awesome. So the thing that's cool about this is you'll notice it's got a little loop so it holds tight over your knuckle and it really helps take a lot of the pressure off of your hand. If anybody's ever done a lot of cutting just with a regular X-Acto blade, um, you might notice that you start to get a lot of indentations, a lot of pain. So something that's really nice about a knife like this is the fact that it lets you sort of more ergonomically hold the blade as you do some cutting. I'll give you an example of how some of this looks. So here we have just a piece of construction paper, pretty pink. Uh, and I'll show you here. One of the things I really like about um, using this knife is it allows you to do a lot more curvature and there's free movement that you can do with this. So you can see how nice and easily you can just get some nice like S curves going on. If you've got a template you're cutting out, it's really, really nice. Moves smoothly and almost no pressure on my other fingers. So this is probably my number one go-to knife. No matter what I'm cutting, I grab for this one. All right, next up, we have more of a traditional blade. This might look like one you've used before of any other brand. Again, this is Fiskars. Um, I like that it's rather robust. You might notice this, like, I feel like you could do some damage. It's pretty solid metal. Uh, it's got a really good padded finger area here. Again, I tend to use a lot of pressure when I do cutting, so anything that's gonna take some of that strain off my fingers is really helping. Um, not much to it. It's just like most blades you've used before. Just glides right through like that. This one is probably something I'd go towards if I was going on a job and I needed one knife that I knew that could do everything. Um, I also tend to go for a more traditional craft blade when I um, am doing things that require a lot of scraping. If I'm trying to remove something or get in um, some crevices or anything like that, a lot of times I end up using craft blades for not cutting. So if you're trying to use that blade to do anything else, doing some scraping, digging stuff out, whatever, this is a really nice one to have. This is the most versatile by far. All right, now this one is a really fun, funky little guy. I had never seen or heard of anything like this before. First, you've got this guard here, which my instinct is just to pull it right off. That pulls the blade out. Uh, so don't do that. You'll notice there's a little arrow on here and that just means pull this way. So it pulls out to the side. First step, getting the cap off. Um, obviously the most unique feature about it is this shape here. And you're probably wondering like, what is the deal with that? So the way that it works is you'll notice it fits really nicely in your palm like this. So again, if you're trying to do a lot of cutting and you wanna take the strain off your fingers, this is a great option for that. So you can find a really nice ergonomic grip that works for you. And then the lower part that connects to the blade is actually rotational. So you might call it a swivel, although the blade itself doesn't swivel. So it's more about you can turn the top of it. Um, this is really good for doing fine detail work. You'll notice how teeny tiny this blade is. <laughs> so there's, there's your first clue about what kind of work you're gonna wanna do with this. Um, again, you can really get in there and just like super fine detail work. If you have some sort of a stencil or a pattern that you're trying to cut around and maybe you've got just the most tiny facial details or any kind of line detail, this is fantastic. I absolutely love how small you can go with this. Um, everything is so easy, almost no pressure required. Again, one of the uh, biggest tips I have for anyone, I say this no matter who I'm talking to, change your blade often. Change it 
more often than you think you need to because it's going to save you. It's going to be the difference between going to make that one cut and realizing you're tearing your paper as opposed to just gliding right through it. And the sharper your blade, the less pressure you have to use. So this is an extremely sharp new blade and I'm just barely having to touch the paper and it comes off in these teeny tiny little splinters which are just fantastic. I would never think I could make something that tiny. So this is a really nice knife right here. Now, uh, the last blade I have here, uh, it's kind of interesting looking. You'll notice it looks pretty big. It reminds me of uh, if you've ever used like a Linocut uh, speedball cutter it, where it's got this big fat base here. The reason why it's so big is because it's actually interchangeable. So you'll notice I have this case right here, again from Fiskars, and you open it up and you'll see it's actually full of a ton of different kinds of blades. So you've got um, what are actually a bit larger than your standard number 11 blades, um, and that's what's in this right now. You've got sort of your flat chisel blades, you've got more of an angled chisel blade, you've got your scalpel blade, and you even have a few different kinds of saw blades. So this is an all around tool if you really don't know what you're gonna be um, needing to cut, or if you know that you're gonna need to be cutting a lot of different things. So this is super versatile. You can really do anything you want with it. And like I said, the, the main blade that goes in it is bigger than your standard number 11. So it's going to be a bit more hardy uh, and be able to tackle maybe some thicker materials, maybe some balsa, anything like that. Uh, the way that it works is you slide the cap off again. <laughs> and this bottom yellow orange part here flips open and that opens up this part here where you can swap out your blade. You can see like, look how beefy that is. That's much bigger than your, your typical blade. Um, slide that in, clamp it back down, good to go. So now that we've covered the different knives that I like to use, just once more, I wanna cover some blades. Now my go-to blade is still an Exacto brand. Um, and you'll notice that this one is blue. It is an, a standard number 11, but it's um, the X-Life, which sometimes can be a little harder to find. I find myself just ordering them online if I can't rely on being able to find them in a hardware store. Um, they are meant to last longer. Now, I, like I said, I like to change my blades often, but being able to rely on the fact that it's a hardier blade, one that's gonna withstand um, a bit more <laughs> of the damage that I inflict on it, uh, I find it's worth it to spend the extra money, get the good quality blades, get the most out of it while you can, and then don't treat them preciously, chuck them away in a sharps container, um, and just keep changing them, you're, you're gonna thank yourself so much when it makes your whole life so much easier. Um, okay, so those are the kind of blades that I like. Another way of cutting, obviously, is with scissors. Now, I don't need to tell you about any like standard big size scissors, everybody knows, you know, like a lot of people already have scissors they like, it's sort of a preference thing. One thing I will recommend is having a tiny pair of scissors. Now, these are what I would call my like, small to medium because they're not the smallest pair I have, trust me, I've, I've got some teeny, teeny, tiny ones, but just having a pair of detail scissors is really helpful if you do find yourself in a situation where you're cutting out some sort of a pattern or a stencil and you need to get in there in a way that either your blade isn't reaching properly or maybe you wanna do a slightly larger section Whatever the case, if you want more straight lines, because sometimes it's easier to make a longer straight line with a scissor blade. Um, these are a pair of singers, which, you know, they make great scissors. Um, but I like to always have a little pair of detail scissors on hand with me. And again, really good to keep your scissors in pretty good shape, take good care of them, try not to use them on anything too uh, damaging, or if you do and you find them getting dull, get them sharpened or get a new pair. Um, take good care of your tools and they'll take good care of you. 
All right, now that we have cut out all of our tiny pieces, I'm gonna move along to what to do with some of the small pieces once you have them cut. Um, if anybody has ever worked with something small before, obviously my field is miniatures, you might be familiar with tweezers. Now these are sort of more of a standard pair of tweezers that I have. Um, these I think I found in a toolbox that was given to me. So really nothing special, just a kind of standard pair of tweezers. The only thing that's different about them is they do have like a little nub on the inside of each um, tong. Uh, sometimes it gets a little annoying, but this is more of your standard one. If I'm trying to pick up, you know, little pieces, it's totally fine, acceptable, can do a number of different things. They're not my favorite tools though. So if you want something a little more specialty, you can do something like this. Again, this is Fiskars. You'll notice the same similar finger grip here. Um, something that's interesting is these are actually the reverse pressure ones. So it's a little bit more like a, is it like forceps basically, where you squeeze down to open them and then you can clamp over your piece. And now I'm not requiring all of that force on my hand to hold this piece. So if you're knowing that it's gonna take you a little while to get your piece into place, uh, you know, that could be nice. And then all you have to do is gently let go by squeezing it. Uh, and that, that lowers the amount of time you're having to put force on an object. Uh, if you don't like the direction of these, that's totally fine. They come in, you know, a number of brands make these and they aren't all finger grip. Find what works for you. Obviously this is all about your comfort and making sure it works nicely. These are some pretty awesome ones. These are called Sizzix. Um, I believe they're for scrapbooking. Uh, I find that there's a lot of handy dandy tools for scrapbooking that I end up using a lot. So they come with a little cover because these are almost like needle tips. They're very sharp and this will help protect them from um, either stabbing you or getting dulled. So remove your tip and then it's pretty standard. I mean, it's a pair of tweezers. You know what to do. You squeeze them when you want to go down. They do have this nice curve, which I find I like. And the thing that's great about these is that you can really get in there for some detail grabbing. I can hold this by the tiniest edge um, and then get it in place and then very gently let go. One of the hardest things is if your, if your tweezers are a little too grabby, you get your piece of paper exactly where you want it and you try and let go and they stick to your tweezers and then you lose your registration when you try and let go. So uh, it's, it's important that you like both the way they grab and the way they release. Uh, and also it takes, I don't think it takes too much force to hold these down. So I'm not feeling as much fatigue um, as you might if you've got some sturdier tweezers on you. But these are, these are probably some of my favorite ones. Um, and I, I, I really like the ergonomic design of them. It's just a really handy dandy little tool. All right, so that covers all my grabbers, as I'll say. And now the last part I wanna cover is what to do as you're placing these things. Now, obviously a lot of paper craft requires glue. There are a number of different products you can use. One of the most common ones is going to be Super 77, Spray 77, whatever you call it. It is basically a spray adhesive. It works a lot of the same way as say, like a rubber cement would, where you apply it to two sides, let the two sides kind of dry for a little bit, get tacky, and then stick them together. I tend to use this if I am doing more of a larger scale thing. If I wanted to glue this whole piece of paper to a surface, obviously spray 77 is going to be the easiest thing to do um, because it's going to evenly coat. I'm going to be able to let it dry and then I can really nicely apply one side, smooth it down and get full contact. Um, some people can have uh, a little bit of warping or bubbling with spray adhesive. So really best to do your tests make sure it works nicely for you. And again, there's a number of brands of spray adhesives, so you might find that one works better for you than another. Um, and some are more aimed at paper, some are removable, some not permanent. So 
shop around. This is what I always have in the shop for a number of different uses, so I tend to go for it. But see what works for you. Now, if any of you are like hardcore crafters, you probably grew up with some Mod Podge. <laughs> I love this stuff. The thing that's great about Mod Podge is that it is both a glue and a sealer. <laughs> so you can use it to stick down the piece that you're working with and then also coat on top of it and it creates a protective layer. If any of you have ever done any decoupaging, any collage artwork, this is the stuff you use. You're gonna use it to stick down all your little bits of cutout paper pictures, and then you're gonna coat the whole thing in it. It comes in a variety of finishes, so if you want a gloss finish, if you want a matte finish, if you want an antique finish so it looks pretty old. Um, this is, this is sort of my go-to for a lot of things when I'm not, too concerned about it being hyper polished and finished or archival. Uh, also, you can get it in just these giant tubs. This is also really good if you're doing other things like maybe working with foam, you can use it as a sealer for that. There's there's many uses for this, but as far as it goes, it's, it's intended for use with decoupaging and collage stuff. It's wonderful, get you a tub of it. Now, if you are worried about it being archival, if you are simply trying to do some paper gluing in a way that will last and not warp and not yellow over time, you cannot beat PVA. So PVA stands for, I can't remember, polyvinyl adhesive, something like that. Um, in a lot of ways, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm pretty positive it's essentially white glue. It is very similar in every way, shape, and form to white glue. The difference is that it is pH neutral. So you can glue something down now, even if a bit of it shows off to the side, and in a few years, it is not going to turn yellow. It is not going to look discolored. This is museum quality PVA adhesive. So this is my go-to for most everything, if I'm doing a professional job and I know that something's gonna need to stand the test of time, this is what I use. It is really wonderful. If any of you saw the blimp video where I uh, attached uh, little advertisements to the bottom of the Blade Runner blimp, I used PVA glue for that because I know that that's something that Adam is going to wanna keep for years and years and <laughs> I did not want it looking worse over time. Um, I can't recommend this enough. I believe it can be a little bit pricey, but honestly, like you can see how big of a tub this thing is. And I use it quite a lot and it's still like only got that much missing from it. So it'll, it'll get you quite a ways. All right, that is everything for my paper craft recommendations. Thank you for checking it out. Make sure to let us know some of the favorite tools you have or maybe some projects that you like to use them with. Bye.